energy forecast for Tuesday, June 4th. Okay, so we have the moon in Taurus energy all day. So there's definitely a slower pace going on. There's more of a presence, more of an anchor, more of a grounded situation into the physical body here in this present moment, very aware of our physical form. Of course, the whole point of the moon being in Taurus energy is to stabilize because we're in Gemini season and there's been all kinds of accelerated situations and new information and details coming in and very divisive topics. We've kind of been tossed back and forth and up and down. The moon and Taurus is here to help us stabilize, to kind of gain our footing, gain our bearings, if you will, so that we can be in touch with the five senses, with the physical body, while exploring in our mental plane, different options, different opportunities, different variables. So there are 12 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. And side note, we have some pretty magical aspects taking place here today. I'll give you the rundown. And of course, we will go into a little bit more depth and detail when we finally get to them. But just know, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves fresh in this Gemini energy as of yesterday, June the 3rd. Mercury is going to get into the mix with Pluto and Jupiter. And if you remember just a couple of days ago, as we entered into June, we had Jupiter and Pluto make this long term aspect with each other. It is a beautiful energy, a magical, empowering type of energy for us to get in alignment with our goals, with our ambitions, and actually start seeing the puzzle pieces snap together on how it is that we're actually going to get there. Now, because this is a long-term influence, we are going to need to be a little bit patient as the hidden details actually emerge. But with Mercury kind of being thrown into this little mix here today, we're definitely going to have some expansive ideas some aha moments, some epiphanies, we are going to be receiving new insights that are going to make us understand, yes, the greater, grander whole, but also what we need to be doing in the present moment to align with that greater vision that we're now looking to actually manifest. So that's one magical aspect. The other magical aspect is the fact that Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Gemini energy is coming up to bumping into teaming up with the sun in this Gemini energy. So this particular conjunction is actually one of the points that Venus makes in her orbit with the earth. This is a star point. So not that I want to go into a very long rant because of course, We've already kind of covered what Venus is all about, the orbit that she makes and all of the five points in which she makes in her orbit in an eight year cycle in an astro class that, of course, popped off last year when Venus retrograded in that Leo energy. Uh, so August of 2023, we, we kind of kicked off this brand new eight year chapter. That was the first point that Venus had made. This is the second point of that particular star orbit, that star formation that she makes as she kind of does her thing and moves through the cosmos. This is the second point. And so that is going to mean something totally different for us because, of course, the first point was made in the heart and the soul of the Zodiac in that Leo energy. And now we're making the second point of this particular star formation in Gemini energy. So we're definitely going to be expanding in the headspace. If Leo is the heart space and Gemini energy is the headspace, then we're expanding on a major change, a major transformation that began back in August of 2023. There will be a little bit of an extended rant over on my Patreon. If you're interested in kind of following along with what this Venus formation is all about, but nonetheless, we have some very powerful pow pow aspects taking place in the cosmos today. So let's get into it. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Gemini energy going to sextile the North Node. Now, this is kind of feeding off of the sun sextiling that North Node that we had late last evening. And so now it's Venus's turn and she coming into this gentle harmonization of energies with that North Node, trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us into this new mission, this new quest, this new purpose to be more individualized, to be a little bit more, I'm going to say self-centered, even though everybody kind of thinks that that's a bad thing. It means knowing thyself anchoring into thyself, knowing what thyself actually needs to heal, 
to grow, to evolve. We in this Gemini energy are very divided on what it is that our heart wants us to be doing and pursuing at this particular point. But having Venus sextile this North Node is giving us a little bit of clarity. Now, again, we're in the process of elimination here. So when I say clarity, you might not be gifted with the actual factual answer that you're looking for in a beautiful little package with a bow. Instead, you might receive insight, information, details that change your perspective and therefore takes you away from one choice point, making the other choice point a lot more favorable. Either way, we're starting to think more futuristically, even though the moon is in Taurus energy, it's okay. We're grounded. We're anchored in this present moment. We're listening to our physical body and how it's reacting to some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, some of the options that we're currently contemplating. So this is a great way for this magical day to get kind of started and to get kicked off. The moon in Taurus energy then going to make a positive interaction with first Venus and Venus rules over this Taurus energy. So this is going to be a little bit of an intense energy. Uh, then the North node in this Aries energy and then the sun. So as you kind of piece together, we have the sun, the North node and Venus over the last couple of days here trying to trigger and activate a new perspective, a new option, new opportunity to actually move forward, a new clarity on what it is that actually means the most to us, what it is that is at the top of our priority list, if you will, that our heart and soul is asking us to do, asking us to pursue, asking us to actually take action and make moves upon. And so it is a beautiful energy that the moon is in Taurus because again, we're not being pressurized to take action and make moves as much as we are just to think about it, to think about what we could be doing, to think about what we want to be doing, what we should be doing, if you will, from all different angles and listening to how our body actually reacts. That's going to be the key indicator because we have to align the mind, body and soul before we can go ahead and actually engage the physical body to take action and make moves to bring said vision dream goal into fruition into materialization so we have that beautiful little you know pow 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 happening and then we have mercury ruler of the mental plane ruler of information communication how it is that we express ourselves in his rulership not only over gemini season but now in gemini energy trining beautiful interaction with Pluto. So this is kind of what I kind of touched on at the beginning of this rant is that Pluto and Jupiter have already been in this magical little interaction. Now Mercury is introducing himself to the mix. So Mercury trining with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. It's air on air energy, air on air action. There's a lot going on in the mental plane. There's a lot of information to be processed. There's a lot of sorting out. There's a lot of weeding out. There's a lot of different variables. There's a lot of different options. What we like about this is that we have Mercury and Pluto kind of helping us to a see things from a different perspective, because that's the key indicator of actually gaining more information and knowledge and clarity. B has us very concentrated, very focused on our goals, on what we want to do, what we want to pursue. Now we're just trying to kind of fill in the gap of how it is that we're going to get from where it is that that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. And then C on that is really helping us to be able to articulate our thoughts, our ideas a lot better than what we have been doing. You know, communication is going to come a little bit more easier, especially with talking about intense or concentrated energies, ideas, focuses. Um, it's going to be a little bit more matter of fact, if you will. And the way that we're able to express ourselves, good, bad, or otherwise, can definitely come across a lot easier, a lot more gracefully, if you will. And this can put us in a situation to come to some sort of agreement, either within ourselves or within a relationship dynamic or resolution to some of the conflicts that have definitely been popping off. So, this kind of sets the tone on where our mental focus is being kind of drawn into. We're focusing on the long term. Again, the moon in Taurus energy, keeping us grounded and anchored and rooted in this present moment so that we're not feeling the tension, the pressure to take action and make moves until we've arrived at what actually feels good to our mind, to our body, to our soul. The moon in this Taurus energy, then going to semi square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is our spirituality, our higher self, our intuition, our imagination, our dreams, our ability to heal emotionally and spiritually change and transform. 
And so this particular, again, conflict tension point is not as big or overwhelming as it would be if it was a square because this is a semi square. So it's half of that. This is putting us in a situation because again, Pisces energy and Taurus energy usually work very well together because whatever it is that we're able to conjure up in our mental plane, in our imagination, in our higher self's vision, we're able to bring it to life through the Taurus energy. That's how we build, how we create, how we bring new things to life, how we bring things into form. And so this is a semi square. So we're not really getting along so well, because again, the higher self, the vision, the goal, the dream that our higher self, that our, you know, I'm going to say potential um, soul's potential lays in. It is almost too overwhelming for us at this particular juncture with the moon and Taurus. It's almost as if we are getting more emotionally confused by trying to think about the long term, more overwhelmed, building in the pressure, building in this crisis point of having to take action to make moves. We just kind of get confused. We get lost in the vision. We get lost in what it is that our heart and soul is asking us to do and pursue versus what our ego selves, this physical ego avatar, looking at our physical materialistic realm and reality. We have a different to do list there. So again, it's almost like we're thinking too far into the future. It makes us uncomfortable at this particular point because we know that the future is going to require us to boss up into new roles and responsibilities that emotionally speaking, we're just not ready for at this particular point in time. So this is an uncomfortable energy to sit in, but lucky for us, we're not sitting in it for too long because what happens then is Mercury is going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings who's in this Gemini energy. And so again, we're feeding off of Jupiter and Pluto's interaction that began a couple of days ago. When Mercury comes up to and meets up with Jupiter, it is a full on mind blown situation. We are expanding the mental plane. We're expanding on our ideas. We are pushing the boundaries of our, let's call it goals, visions, dreams. We are put in a situation where we are growing in confidence and optimism to build ourselves up to this pivot point, to this change point that again, we're not ready to make right now. But again, in our mental plane, we have to be walking through the steps of in order to actually allow the physical body to respond to some of the options and opportunities that we're currently contemplating and actually making. So this is a powerful time for aha moments, for understanding, for a new level of awareness, for focusing our time, our energy, our attention on the path, the plan, the strategy that has to be built, that has to be formulated to make sure that when we engage the physical body to take action and make moves, that we know exactly what is required of us, what needs to be done and in what order. So this is going to give us like a deeper understanding because we get that from Pluto, but also help us grow upon some of the very basic fundamental ideas, options, opportunities that we've been, again, weighing the pros and cons about in this Gemini energy. So then the moon in Taurus energy is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, willpower and discipline in this Pisces energy. So again, this is a favorable aspect because the Pisces energy and the Taurus energy are working well together. Even more than that, a little bit of a reality check. It's not a harsh one because, again, we're working very well. The moon and Saturn working very well to just kind of accept the fact that we are about to boss up. We are required, if you will, to rise to this new challenge, to initially start the building process towards this goal, this vision, this dream. This is going to help us kind of structure our thoughts, our ideas, and the emotions that we're having to them. And again, Saturn is here to help us build something new, especially a long-term foundation or structure that essentially will have us building towards our dreams. That's where the Pisces energy comes into play. So shortly after that, we have Venus coming up to bumping into teaming up with the sun. This is the conjunction star point, in which I was talking about. This is definitely putting us in a situation to see where there is a new potential for a new beginning, a positive change, positive transformation in a different direction. So first of all, we're starting to understand some of the tough love life lessons that we've already been in, especially where relationships are concerned, especially where 
there has been such a detachment and a disconnect in our personal lives, feeling that animosity and anger coming from the collective, really kind of being positioned to kind of be angry and frustrated with the distance that we're finding ourselves in with trying to get along with other people. This is a turning point for that. So we're starting to understand why we were put in those situations and positions. We're understanding why they had to happen in order for us to try something different, a new option, if you will, in order to create a long term change. And so this is a time where we are really starting to see that new wisdom, new insight, new aha moments are coming in that's changing and shaping the way that we're taking a look at our existing relationships. It's almost like we're being kind of shook up and reawakened to focus on what is working, the beauty of the world, the beauty of life around us, the small little things that make everything just, you know, peaceful and calm and and just, I'm going to say, rewarding. We have spent the last little chapter here on focusing on what isn't working, what we don't like, what is no longer working for us, what we no longer want to experience, focusing on the differences in the relationship dynamics or in the environmental exchanges around us. And so now it's kind of like we're pivoting and now we're starting to see the beauty. Now we're starting to appreciate the differences. Now we're starting to get back on the same page. We're starting to work towards a reconciliation. And so this, again, being a part, a greater, grander plan of this eight year cycle, we still have a lot of time to pass and a lot more work to do, but feeding off of where it is that we were kind of bringing this new version of self to the surface of our awareness and actually integrating it into the physical form back in August of 2023, this is the second stage of that. So now we're expanding on this new version of self and we are essentially rewriting our inner narrative due to us now appreciating the differences instead of hating them, Um, appreciating the beauty instead of focusing in on the ugliness. And so this is going to be a major renovation of the heart space. The moon in Taurus energy, then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. So this is very much helping us to reshape, reform the perspective of who it is we now are the Chiron energy because it's being aspected in a positive way this isn't about the wounds it isn't about the pain and the trauma and who caused them it's about the growth the healing the energy and effort that we're pouring in ourselves to heal said wounds to really kind of close the door on some choppy chapters and so this is giving us again a new worth a new value that we're starting to see within this new version of self The moon then comes up to, bumps into, teams up with, conjuncts Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. So this is when our minds are blown. This is a reset. This is an ending just as it is a new beginning. This is a new mood, a new attitude, a new ability of seeing the greater, grander perspective and picture. This is us being more open to new ways of doing things, new ways of seeing things, new ways of operating, new ways of reacting, new ways of progressing towards what it is that now we're starting to realize is calling us into a different path, into a different direction. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Taurus energy making a positive interaction with Mars. Mars is the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's nearing the ending point of his rulership in Aries energy. And so this particular interaction is beautiful for us because we're getting motivated. We're getting inspired. We're getting determined to actually build ourselves up to the action point that again, we're not there yet. We're not ready kind of do. We're ready to kind of make those particular moves. However, we're building the inner realm of energy, of motivation needed in order to rise up to the challenges that we know are presenting themselves as we try to pivot and initiate this new chapter. And so this particular energy is going to be a beautiful pick me up, beautiful pep in our step, if you will, to kind of feed off of some of the earlier aspects that popped off through the day and put us not only in a different heart space, not only in a different mind space, but put us in a different position, seeing ourselves in a different position in our current realm, in our current reality, and where it is that we would like to go from here. What we have to do, what we have to build, what we have to create, what we're excited, inspired, and determined to actually see through. <laughs> 